Hello and welcome to Polytalks. I am your host, Caleb Marr. Today we have a very special guest. He is the former Ontario Cabinet Minister and MPP, and he's also a candidate for the upcoming election for Ward 23 City Councilor, George Smitherman. Hello, George. How are Hi. you today? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me here. No problem. And so right off the bat, um, who is George Smitherman in your own words? Well, uh, George Smitherman is uh, just, uh, just a regular guy with uh, roots in Etobicoke who's had a chance uh, to live out his childhood dream of uh, being involved in community and political life. Awesome. And over the years, I've had a chance to work at all levels of government. And uh, I'm uh, uh, fortunate enough to be able to uh, try and return to what I really most love to do, which is represent people and help to champion local communities. Awesome. And so you were the first openly gay MPP elected in Ontario. Uh, would you see that, did you see that as more of an advantage as, or as more of a challenge? You know, I think actually I was very lucky. Uh, history played itself out quite well for me. And although many people, uh, many LGBTQ people face extreme discrimination and still do, uh, I was pretty fortunate in that sense. And because I was the first openly gay MPP, mm -hmm. I used to say the first openly gay and only the 200th in history. Because oh. it's not like it's not like there weren't people that exactly. had come through the place uh, yeah. who, who, where there might have been whispers yeah. about it. But um, different, you know, when you're in a class of 130 people mm -hmm. and you have one thing that differentiates you from others, as a politician, that's a platform and an opportunity Definitely. and uh, gave me uh, a chance to have added profile and the like. So by and large, it you know, worked yeah. out well for me, I'd Definitely. say. Awesome, yeah. And last week we, did, we had um, Rachel Lauren Clark on the show. Have you had the chance to meet her yet? Sure, I, I know Rachel. We're overdue to have lunch and uh, I, admire, uh, I admire her both for her professional, uh, yeah. uh, her professional uh, successes and uh, had a chance to uh, watch her as a budding politician also. She's got such a great charisma and a personality yeah. for politics. Yeah. Lovely she's, person. She's an amazing woman. I remember, yeah, because I was the one that did the interview and she was just so selfless and everything she said was just so amazing. She's just a great woman. But she has some American roots too, maybe. She does, yeah, she was, maybe, she maybe does. just more sympathetic to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Um, so uh, you did run for mayor back in 2010. Could you speak? I'm trying on to forget that one, too. <laughs> Could you speak on the experience you had with campaigning, and also how does that compare to how you are campa campaigning now for city councilor? Well, uh, campaigning for uh, campaigning for mayor across the breadth of Toronto was uh, was really difficult because I was so used to being able to work in my local context. Right. Then to run for mayor was 22 times bigger. And uh, running against Rob Ford uh, was very difficult. And you know, I, I, take no, I take no comfort from the drubbing that my party took in the last election, but it did kind of go across my uh, mind that now more people will realize that these Fords are just not so easy to, uh, not so easy to run against. But what I'm so excited about is that Ward 23, I describe it as an intimate territory. It's a, nine neighborhoods, about 50,000 people, right. a very progressive ward. And I'm just excited about the chance to uh, work at street by street and apartment hall by apartment hall and alley and laneway by alley and laneway. I know it well and I know so many people here and I'm um, just uh, looking forward to being back in the political realm. I bet, yeah, definitely. And so now you are, like I said, running for city council. And so what plans or implementations do you have for the future of Ward 23 if you're elected? I think, you know, the first thing I say to Ward 23 uh, voters is I'm a local champion. I have the capacity, I've been around government at all of its levels, I played senior roles here and there, yeah. I have a Rolodex and all of that, but what I know by now is how to make things happen. Mm -hmm. I am the agent of the local communities. Right. Um, in the context of Regent Park, I've already said, uh, seeing the redevelopment uh, finished yeah. in the way that it was promised is yeah. critical, and it's taking too long for some people, I have right. to say and uh, food is another area that I've identified yeah. as an opportunity both to address poverty, yeah. uh, help to alleviate poverty exactly. through local solutions. Yeah. Urban agriculture is just rushing forward. The technology and opportunities are extraordinary. And a lot of people like our seniors, of which there are many in Regent Park as an example, yeah. are suffering from severe social isolation. 
And I think there's so many great food initiatives that are going on yeah. in our ward, but I really want to try and uh, animate those and make our ward a demonstration project for what's possible for the whole city and for other urban areas. I think we have a lot of untapped potential. Yeah, that's great to hear. And I, I did some reading up on you before this, and I read somewhere that you learned a lot of lessons from Barbara Hall and Pam McConnell. Um, could you speak on just important things you'd learn from them? You know, uh, throughout my life in politics, well, throughout my life, f starting from my mother and my grandmother, uh, women have always been the key, you know, key influencers uh, yeah. on me. Barbara and Pam go back, you know, they knew each other since the 1960s. Right. They worked at Central Neighborhood House as uh, youth workers and stuff like that. I'm a very, very, I have a lot of energy and a lot of drive and some people yeah. would say sometimes I'm impatient. And what Barbara and Pam showed me time and time again is that by working through an issue at the front end and giving more time for what some people call consultation, but they don't like yeah. the word, mm -hmm. like, like that's slowing us, that I saw in many, on many occasions when that did help to sow a consensus, yeah. which made subsequent process progress happen more quickly so I think that's the number one uh, I think that's the number one thing is to make sure that people have had an opportunity to uh, to absorb the information right. and fall in line with it in a sense and I think I mentioned to you uh, uh, before that uh, I watched Barbara achieve this on zoning of what was the Air Canada's we then oh, called yeah. it the Raptor Stadium yeah. project the Toronto Maple Leafs weren't even involved in it at that <laughs> point now it's about to get another name mm -hmm. but Barbara's work and perseverance uh, resulted in a 16 to 1 vote one guy just couldn't find you know could we never find the means <laughs> to vote yes he just was impossible for him but she worked extra hard to bring everybody yeah. along Definitely. and I, I always uh, take that to heart yeah I admire that as well and who else would you say are, who would you say are your biggest inspirations as a whole? Well, for politics, it's Pierre Trudeau, uh, 100%. I got involved in his final campaign, which is in, in 1980, the term of government after brought Canada the Constitution and the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And that's what's given me equality and allowed me to uh, live my life uh, so fully. And globally, uh, Nelson Mandela, whom I had the chance to see twice in my life, once just 100 or 200 meters from here, yeah. when, the, when Park School was being renamed as Nelson Mandela Park School. And it was one of the most emotional, I just, I couldn't stop crying. His, just being in his presence was so remarkable. And I saw him once more in my life at the World AIDS Conference in, uh, in Bangkok. And Muhammad Ali, somebody that I didn't get a chance to see uh, up close and personal, I still felt so touched by him and admired him in so many realms. Oh, yeah. And really as a, his gift as a communicator and an entertainer, extraordinary. And I think uh, When We Were Kings, the soundtrack and documentary from his oh, yeah. uh, fight against uh, Foreman in uh, right. what was then Zaire, uh, that's, uh, that's number one for me as documentaries and soundtracks go. I love that. That's I love awesome. it. I can't watch it enough. <laughs> And you said Mel, uh, Nelson Mandela came to Regent Park. How long ago was that? I think that would have been around, I'm guessing slightly here, but I think that would have been around 2001, 2002, oh. something like that. Not too long. And um, it, it, it wasn't just emotional for me. The, the, the six or 800 people that were there, plus it was live broadcast on TV, and to see his influence yeah. over children Especially children of, you know, I think especially children of color, which uh, uh, of course is uh, is uh, is a prevalent characteristic in uh, in Regent Park. It was yeah. just unbelievable. It was just so heartwarming to imagine that those kids could actually see a man uh, such a you know such a global icon. Right, exactly. And kind of shifting gears a little bit, what would you say makes Regent Park and the rest of Ward 23 as a whole so special? I think in a word it's diversity and um, you know my, my uh, the way I got it figured out is uh, we, a lot of people live in the downtown. If you wake up in the morning focused on how you're different from the person next door, it's over. You know if you're focused on those differences rather than on finding ways of understanding and mm -hmm. celebrating and I guess what we call now inclusion. Yeah. 20 years ago we called it tolerance. I don't like that word anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be tolerated. No, I want no. to be included. Yeah, exactly. And um, I think that uh, that's the dynamic aspect here. It's rich and poor, gay and straight, black and white, and people that have come 
even today, from all, car, all parts of the world, in many of them in search of uh, freedom and liberation and opportunity. Yeah. And the downtown east side has always also had a responsibility to care for vulnerable people. Exactly. And there are many yet in our midst and there's much sadness yeah. and there's much uh, risk of uh, safety and a lot that we can do to enhance the health and safety of these neighborhoods. And I'm, uh, I'm, I love them yeah. for all of their features, but I'm gonna be very dedicated yeah. to trying to improve their health and safety and enhance opportunities for people in these neighborhoods. That's great to hear. That's, yeah, when I came to Canada, cause I'm from the States, um, the biggest thing I noticed was diversity and how, how much just amazing diversity you guys have compared to back home. And this was the first time I'd ever been out of the country. So it was so, it's just so cool to see that. And it's still so surreal every single day here. I get surrounded by so many different types of people and it's, I couldn't love it more. It's even, sur I mean, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's something that uh, is fascinating and exciting to me, but also something that we can't ever take for granted. You have to work at that every day. Exactly. You have to want to work at that every single day. Yeah, exactly. And so I guess switching up a little bit, what would you say is your proudest moment or most touching moment in as a politician or just as a character itself? I think having kids, you know, the most touching moment might have been the loss of my husband by suicide. Um, you know, I have... I've ridden, I've ridden the roller coaster of the highs and lows like, like most people have in their life and tried to speak candidly about all those circumstances. I was elected uh, three times in this area to represent and I look back on 10 years in elected service and the redevelopment of Regent Park and Pathways to Education uh, stand out as the most rewarding things that I had a chance because I contributed a lot of uh, sort of blood, sweat and tears yeah. as, it, as it were in the early days of those uh, initiatives and there's uh, so much to be proud of. That's great to hear. And so just wrapping up here a little bit, um, the last thing I want to ask you is why should people care about George Smitherman? Uh, people should care about George Smitherman because George Smitherman uh, makes a lifetime out of caring about people. And I have uh, capacities beyond uh, uh, beyond many people because by now I have energy plus the experience to know where to turn for the kind of help that communities need to be stronger and healthier and uh, safer. And I just want to be a champion and help to elevate people and elevate communities. And uh, I have a track record of having done that. And I have more of that in store alongside the good people of Ward 23. Exactly. Well, thank you, George, for coming My in pleasure. today. It was great meeting you. Thank you for tuning in to Poly Talks this evening. I am your host, Caleb Marr. Today we have special guest George Smitherman, who is a candidate for Ward 23 for City Council in the upcoming October election. Be sure to vote for that, and we'll see you next time.